Oh, job, boy. What an amazing thing. Trust you popping up out of nowhere. How are you, Jerry? George, this is terrific. What, what, what are you doing now? How's the demon wife? How's everything? No, damn it. First things first. What'll you have? You don't fancy a bottle of the bubbles, do you? Shall we? A brandy and ginger ale would suit me very well, thanks. You sure? <laughs> All right. Hey, Linda, sweetheart. G give us a double brandy, a bottle of ginger ale, and a, another bucket of gin, will you? Good girl, lad. I think I'll marry her. How many would that be, Jerry? I'm a divorce addict, a hopeless case. <laughs> Not lucky like you, George. But there's only one Anne. Now, I'll do a deal with you, an offer you can't refuse. I'll shack up with Anne and be the envy of London, and you can have my job on the comic. You've got just the turn of phrase of the women's ping pong. Inscrutable Chinese wizard Eddie. Do you fancy it? <laughs> Is that the task for the day? A much bigger stuff, old boy. Footer, the opiate of the people. Heap big transfer. Scottish Thunderboots to rescue of ex-champions. Now on the slide. Thanks, Linda, my love. Do you want me to write it down, Mr. Westerby? Ah, please, Linda. Cheers, George. Cheers. This isn't entirely a chance meeting. I got the letter you wrote me last football season. I burnt it straight away. Right. Thanks. Stupid of me. Talking out of school. Sorry. No, no, no. You obviously did what you felt was the best thing at the time, and so did I. I haven't seen many of the boys and girls lately, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I guess they put us both on the shelf. With me, I can hardly blame them. Firewater, not good for Braves. They think our blab crack up. I'm sure they don't. I expect they're just resting you up for a bit. They do that, you know. In case you've been wondering, I didn't tell anyone else about your letter. I was out of favor, indeed, out of work by then. Writing to me wasn't what put them off you, if that's what you thought. In your letter, you said you were a bit worried about Toby Esterhazy. Felt you ought to get something off your chest. Yes, well, I got all xenophobe and suspicious. Thought Toby had gone a bit haywire, as a matter of fact. I should talk. <laughs> Tell me now. You'd uh, just come back from Czechoslovakia, hadn't you? Last job I did for Tobe. Looks like the last I'll ever do. Letterbox job? Yes. Uh, nothing to it, really. Telephone kiosk, ledge at the top, dump a little package ready for collection. <laughs> Uh, that was Budapest, the Czechoslovak thing. I ran into by accident. Uh, I had to go on to Prague, you see, for the comic. Nothing to do with Tom. Uh, Linda, sweetheart. And again, Mr. Westerby. Uh, please, my beauty. Oh, no, 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 no. You've got time to eat? Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, we'll uh, go Dutch on that, shall we? I, um... <clears throat> I was in this bar in Prague. Always use it. Locals go there, all sorts. Anyway, I, I got in with this crowd at a corner table. We were both playing the squeeze box. We, we were all hugger mugger to the music. Oh, thank you, Linda, my love. And there's um, there's this kid with a pudding bowl haircut. Army, obvious. Anyway, he's on leave, well in his cuffs, and he knows I'm English. And he suddenly says, do I want to know the truth about the British spy who got himself shot up by the Russian secret police? Just like that. Yells it right in my ear. I played dumb, of course, and he goes right on with it. You, you know, the Jim Prito shambles. Well, the kid was belly aching about the trials and tribulations of being a foot soldier of the line. It seems that on the two nights in question, he and his mates were being chased around the place till they were dizzy. Make camp, break camp, move up, move back, fix bayonets. But the big point was the Russian contingent. Full war paint, tanks, motorbikes, tracker dogs, and a big carload of very sinister civilians. Dirty work afoot in the forest. Up near the Austrian border, this was. So, my little friend, being a sassy little devil, 
decides to ask his sergeant what's it all about. Look, Sarge, he says, what's going on? Are we being invaded, Sarge? No, son, says the sergeant. The Russians are after a British spy who tried to kidnap a general. Ah, uh, after? Or where after? Exactly. That's what the kid wanted to tell me. The Russians moved in on the Friday. It was the day after when they got Jim. As the kid said, they were ready and waiting for him. Knew the lot in advance. He bad story. Bad for our big chief. Bad for tribe. So, as soon as I got back, I went and told all to Tobe. How did he take it? <laughs> well, to begin with, it was thanks a million, Jerry, old boy. He'd go and powwow with the top brass. And then the next morning... You're so plastered these days, you can't tell fact from fiction. You're an embarrassment. You go in a bender, drink yourself in a cloud cuckoo land, and come staggering back here with a load of tripe like this. You're pathetic. Now look, old boy. I don't want to hear any excuses. I had to report what I heard. Yes, you believed every stupid word of it, didn't you? Swallowed it like... like mother's milk. A load of half-baked rumours, you come spreading them round here. What you can remember, through your alcoholic haze, I didn't forget a thing. Well, you will now. You'll forget the lot. Don't you see? The boy was a plant. Provocateur, in layman's language. He was doing a job for Moscow Center. Object disruption. Make the circus chase our own tails. And you fell for it, Jerry, that's all. Okay, Tobe, you know best. If you don't want the story, that's your business. I do it for the paper. You what? Not the bit about the Russians getting there first, of course not, but the rest of it's all good stuff. The story wasn't covered very well at the time, just the official statement. I thought Jerry gets himself a splash about the day the Czechs mobilized for the Third World War. Except it was one lone Englishman surrounding him all by himself. Man, that's a good piece. <laughs> Comic might even run an ad on the telly. Well, the day after that, I was called for by the editor. The editor, I mean, not the sports bloke. He tells me some clown has been on the phone with a formal warning. Keep that baboon, Westerby, off the Checo spy story. Any further reference against the national interest? End of message. Sir, I didn't get the report for the year award. <laughs> Can't, can you, when your story's on the spike? Cheers. But you didn't spike it entirely. I mean, you wrote to me. Dropped the letter in by hand. Must have been the same day you talked to Toby Esterhazy. Yes, well, as I say at the time, it just felt odd. <laughs> my mistake, old boy. When I heard you'd got the heave ho anyway, I felt an even bigger damn fool. I thought it was you who phoned the editor, you see. It wasn't. Of course not. Sorry, old one. Nothing untoward going on, is it, old boy? I mean, tribe hasn't gone on the rampage or anything. But are you hunting alone? I mean, I, I know I'm not the brightest, but when you start asking questions, there's got to be something. <laughs> what I'm saying is, any time of all. Thank you, Jesse. Well, 
Rum chap, Toby Esther Hazy. But good. My God, first rate. Brilliant, my view, but rum. Don't forget to give my love to Anne, will you? One of the great marriages that always said so. Oh, come on, Jerry, out with it. Did Toby say something about Anne? Some story had gone. I told him to stuff it up his silk drawers. <laughs> I suppose I should be prepared for something like this. Take on a temporary, the last thing you expect is loyalty. Well done, that boy! We're going to lose this match. So much for Prido's coaching. I'm absolutely furious with that man. It's monstrous to clear off. Did he say what's wrong with his mother? No, he did not. She is supposed to be dying. Well, that's one excuse for absence that he can hardly use again. Not at all, Mother. It's quite the reverse. One false alarm can easily lead to another. I shall ask for a full medical diagnosis next time. <laughs> Those front row forwards of theirs look overaged to me. Did he ever tell you how he got that awful shoulder? Oh, fell off a bus with a bottle of vodka. What? Fell off a bus with a bottle of vodka inside him, I shouldn't wonder. I suppose I shall have to take his French. Oh, come on, that's good! Be tough! He's gone in the Alvis because he'd never trust any other form of transport. But if he'd gone for good, he wouldn't leave the caravan behind, would he? Stands to reason that. Besides, he'd have said goodbye properly, Rhino would. Wouldn't just go, not Rhino, not like a juju man. Hello, oh, Toby. Peter. It's not exactly five star, but then we are shopping a bit down market. Safe houses I have now. Take the weight off your feet. It won't be long. So we're expecting a pole, are we, Peter? A pole in the fur trade you think I might like to take on as a courier? I'd like him on my own payroll for preference. It looks useful. But what's the point? My lads are underemployed as it is. 
Very generous of you, Peter. Stay put, Toby. Sorry about this, Toby. Against the wall, Tobe. Did he come alone, or is there some little friend waiting down in the square? Looks all clear to me, sir. Go back to the other room and don't take your eyes off the street. We've seen something. Turn the light out a moment. Just a shadow, I suppose. Yes, I think so. I want to put a thesis to you, Toby, about what's been going on. Let's cast our minds back, say, about 18 months when Control is still with us. Percy Alleline wants his job, everyone knows that. But although Control is sick and past his prime, Percy can't dislodge him. It's a time of uneasiness in the circus. Morale is low, activity is low, yes? I remember, George. Well, Percy's door opens one day and one of our senior men walks in. We'll call him Gerald. Well, it's just a name. And Gerald says, Percy, I've stumbled on a major source of Russian intelligence. It could be a gold mine. Perhaps they take a walk in the park or drive in a car, but whatever, Percy listens. Because what Gerald goes on to say is music in Percy's ears. Some of us, Gerald tells him, are worried sick about the state the circus has got into. I mean, look at our operational losses. Agents, networks. He's careful not to suggest there's a traitor inside the circus, but he emphasizes that slovenliness at the top is leading to failure all round. That is to say, it's all Control's fault. My thesis, you understand. Sure, George. Another notion is that Percy Alleline was his own Gerald that he went out and bought himself a top Russian spy and manned his own boat from then on. But I don't believe that's what happened. I think he'd mess it up, don't you? Sure, George. So the next thing is for Gerald to say to Percy, I and a little group of like-minded friends want you to be our father figure, Percy. We are not political men. We don't know our way in the Whitehall jungle, but you do. Did you bring a babysitter, Toby? George, why should I? I came to meet Peter and some pearl in the fur trade. Do you want Fawn to go down and have a look? No, need him here. Can't take the chance. Yes, well, Gerald says that if Percy will handle the committees, he and his friends will handle Merlin. Merlin being the Moscow intelligence source and witchcraft, the name of the material he supplies. And how well it all worked. Merlin's material proved excellent, as everyone agreed, except Control. And eventually, Control was out, and Percy was king. So what's new, George? Ever bought a fake picture, Toby? Sold a couple once. The more you pay for it, the less inclined you are to doubt its authenticity. Merlin's price was 20,000 francs a month into a Swiss bank, according to the file. Oh, yes, Toby, this is official. There came the day when Gerald admitted Percy to the greatest secret of all, that the Merlin setup has a London end. Alexei Alexandrovich Polyakov. Cultural attaché at the Russian Embassy in London. You're on record as grading him snow white, Toby. Quite untainted with the mischief of espionage. 
in fact, he's Merlin's London representative. That's a start, I should tell you now, of a very clever knot. Now, everything to do with witchcraft is secret, of course, but inevitably a lot of people are involved. Transcribers, translators, codists, evaluators, God knows what. Doesn't worry Gerald, of course. He likes it. Because the art of being Gerald is to be one of a crowd. But when it comes to Polyakov, that's a different story. Who knows it? Only you, Roy Bland, Bill Hayden, and Percy. Three of you and Alaline. You're the magic circle. Who meets him, Toby? For God's sake, let me sweat the bastard. You all meet him. How's that? Percy represents the authoritarian side, asks after his wife, suggests it's time he took a little holiday. Very paternal, Percy would be. Bill Hayden, I think, would see Polyakov much more often. Bill's a Russian expert, for one thing, and he's good entertainment value. I'd expect Bill to shine when it comes to the briefings and follow-up sessions, making sure the right messages went back to Moscow. Roy Bland's good on economics, as well as being top man on the satellite countries, so he'd have plenty to chat about. Then there's you, Toby. You'd have your solo sessions with Polyakov, because there's tradecraft to discuss, and all those little snippets about goings-on inside the embassy, which are very much your field. And if the magic circle wanted Polyakov to do some photography inside the embassy, it would be you who would supply the film. Replenish his stock from time to time. Take him. Little sealed packets. Toby, you wouldn't be lying, would you? Did you bring a babysitter? Across my heart, George, I swear to you. What would you use for a job like this? Cars? No, on foot. Keep walking them through. How many? Eight. Ten, maybe. What about one man alone? One? Never. Impossible. I can call Mendel to take a look. I'm sure Toby's right. Listen, George. I know Polyakov works for Moscow Centre. Of course I do. We all know. But come on. Think how many other operations we've run this way. We've bought Polyakov, right? He's a Moscow hood, but he's also our Joe. Now, he's got to pretend to his own people that he's spying on us. So we've got to give him one or two goodies now and again. Sure, I've passed him the odd sealed packet. Chicken feed. So he can send them home and Moscow sent a clap him on the back and tell him he's a big man. It happens all the time. Now, come on, George. You know the game. So are you Polyakov's agent inside the circus? Someone has to be. If Polyakov's cover for meeting you people is that he's spying on the circus, then he must have a man on the inside, mustn't he? And Polyakov can't report back to Moscow center after he's picked up a great load of circus chicken feed and just say, I got this from the boys. He's got to have a whole history. How he selected his man, courted him, bought him. How they meet and where. The whole paraphernalia of running a double agent and all this in Moscow Center's archives. You, Toby? Toby Esterhazy masquerades as a circus traitor in order to keep Polyakov in business. My hat, Toby. A dangerous job like that deserves a whole chest full of medals. You're on a damn long road, George. What happens to you if you never reach the other end? With Lacon and the minister behind me. Why become the little guy? 
Why not go for the big ones? Percy Allerline, Bill Hayden. Thought you were a big guy these days. You're the perfect choice, Toby. Resentful about slow promotion, sharp-witted, fond of money. With you as his agent, Polyakov has a cover story that really sits up and works. The big three give you the little sealed packets of chicken feed, and Moscow Center thinks you're all theirs. The only problem arises when it turns out you've been handing Polyakov the crown jewels and getting Russian chicken feed in return. If that's the case, Toby, you're going to need some good friends, like us. Gerald, of course, is a Russian mole. And he's pulled the circus inside out. But witchcraft material isn't chicken feed. It's the best. It was good at first. Listen, George, suppose you're wrong. Toby. Who told you to muzzle Jerry Westerby? The same person who sent you down to Sarat with a thousand pounds for Jim Prido and the instruction, get lost? Speak up. Was it Percy? I think so. Maybe it was Bill, though. Well, listen, it was a big operation. Sometimes why? It never seemed to come straight from one. There was a committee. I took a lot of orders. You told Predo to forget about Tinker Taylor. Where did that come from? I never knew what that meant. Now, George, that's the truth. Poor Toby. Yes, I do see. What a dog's life you must have been leading, running between them all. George, if there's anything I can do of a practical nature... Oh, you know me, George. My boys are pretty well trained. Now, if you want to borrow them... I'd have to speak to Lacon, of course. But, uh, well, you'd expect that. All I want is for this thing to be cleared up, for the good of the circus. I want nothing for myself. Where's this safe house you keep exclusively for meeting Polyakov? Five lock gardens at Camden Town. You're going to be staying here for a night or two. Fawn will look after you. Form. You'll have to make appropriate explanations to the circus by telephone. You're having girl trouble or whatever sort of trouble you're in these days. Then there's your wife, of course. Sure, George. I can handle that. If he's any bother, Fawn, use your own discretion. Peter, I want you to watch my back. Will you do that for me? Look for one man, but look. We will join up at Sussex Gardens.
Same as you, George. Just a feeling. Someone, but I couldn't say for certain. I covered both of you right to the front door. If either of you did have company, he's cleverer than me. That's been done. Do you have anyone particular in mind? Shall I go down to pavement level, take a sniff? Well, proceed. Yes. Right. Now, the minister has one major worry. In his own words, how much porcelain gets broken at the end of the day? Scandal he's talking about. If we unmask the mole, are the Russians going to cut their losses by telling the press of the world how they've made fools of us all this time? I think not. If you make your enemy look stupid, you lose the justification for taking him on. Yes, I've told him that, George. So isn't his mind at rest? He hopes there'll be nothing messy, George. Nothing that could provoke Moscow. But proceed. Heavens, yes. Clean the stables. Mm -hmm. Problem, flush out the mole. Method. We need to alarm him just sufficiently to make him call for a crash meeting with Polyakov at the safe house, a meeting General the Mole needs all to himself, secret from the rest of the witchcraft magic circle. There are two of them, and Alaline. We have definitely cleared Esther Hazy. Oh, yes. Thank you. Carla really did bring off the perfect fix for a while. It would be beautiful in another context. Tinker Alaline, Taylor Hayden, Soldier Bland. Spot the mole. Quite. Ways and means, George. Ricky Tower will go to Paris. He'll make use of the appropriate embassy facilities to send a signal to the head of London Station. Something, 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 which we'll now concoct. will be have information vital to the safeguarding of the service request immediate meeting personal remember vital to the safeguarding of the service it's even true don't forget that no mistakes Ricky your head's on the block not the only one Peter <laughs> 